everything we've been coding so far is stuff we've built from scratch. So you can see exactly how it works and apply those skills to your own projects. Sometimes though, writing something from scratch is risky. Perhaps the code is complicated, perhaps easy to get wrong, perhaps it changes often, or any other myriad of reasons, which is why dependencies exist. The ability to fetch third-party code and use it in our projects. Now Xcode comes with a dependency manager built right in called Swift Package Manager, or just SPM. You can tell Xcode the URL of some code that's stored online, and it'll download it for you. You can even tell it what version to download, which means if the remote code changes sometime in the future, you can be sure it won't break in your existing code. To try us out, I made a very simple Swift package you can import into any project. It has a small extension to Swift sequence type, which array, set, dictionary, and even ranges all conform to. It pulls out a number of random items at the same time. Anyway, the first step is to add the package to our project. So in Xcode, you wanna to go to this file menu here, then choose add package dependencies here. Now, it's gonna ask you for the URL here, up here, this box here, search or enter package URL. So you wanna enter this URL here, https colon slash slash github.com slash two straws, that's me, slash sample package, like that. Then press enter and it'll fetch it. Now Xcode's read the package, read its configuration, and it'll show you various options here about which version you want to use. As you can see, this dependency rule is up to next major version, so one up to two, which is the most common one to use. And it means if the author of the package, which is me, updates it in the future somehow, as long as you don't introduce breaking changes, Excel will automatically update the new version for you. Now the reason this is possible is because most developers have agreed a system of what we call semantic versioning or just semver for their code. So if you see a version number like um, 1.5.3. The one is considered the major number, the five is considered the minor number, and the three is considered the patch number. Now, if developers follow Semver correctly, then they should change the patch number when fixing a bug, as long as it doesn't break any APIs or add any new features. They can change the minor number when they added features that don't break any APIs, and they change the major number when they do actually break APIs. And this is why the whole up to next major version of Xcode is so useful. It means you should get all the bug fixes and features over time, but you won't accidentally switch to a version that breaks your code. Anyway, we're done with this package right now. Let's go ahead and click add package here to make Xcode add it to your system. Then click add package again. And it should appear here under package dependencies, sample package version one. To try it out, in your content view, we're gonna first import that sample package. We'll do import sample package, like that. And now, as you can see, this thing's a module all by itself. We can import any way we want to in our code. And now we can go ahead and try it in our view. For example, we could simulate a uh, simple lottery, picking a range of numbers from one through to 60, pick seven of them, make them strings, then join them to a single string, uh, and to be concise, this will need some code you haven't seen before, so I'll break it down a little bit. First, we'll have just in our, our body here, text results. And that's not gonna work, okay? Because there's missing results of variable. We'll fill that in a second, okay? First, making a range of numbers from one through to 60 can be done by adding a new property to content view. And so here, let possible numbers be the array of one, through to 60. Now, this is actually a range inside an array, which isn't really required. You can actually just say one through 60 and use the array directly, the range directly, or convert to an array. I prefer doing that, but you'll see either way sometimes. Second, we're gonna make a new property inside here that's computed called results. And it'll pick seven numbers from there and make it into a single string. And so we're gonna add another property below this thing. We'll say here, var results is a string with a colon there. And there'll be more code to come here. Now inside here, we're gonna select seven random numbers from our range. 
which we've done using the extension you got from my sample package framework. This provides a new random method that accepts an integer and return up to that number of random elements from your sequence in a random order. Now, lottery numbers are normally arranged smallest to largest, so we'll sort them too. So here, we're gonna say, let selected be our possible numbers range, dot random seven, dot sorted. Next, we'll convert this to be an array, so it's not an array of integers, but an array of strings instead. This takes only one line of code in Swift because sequences have a method called map. So let's convert an array of one type to an array of another type by applying a function to each element. In our case, we want to initialize a new string from each integer. So we can use string.init as a function we want to call. And so we'll add the code here. Let strings be our selected array dot map string dot init. At this point, strings is an array of strings containing the seven random numbers from our range. So the last step is to join them all together into a single string. So we'll add one last line of code here, return strings dot formatted like that. And that completes our code. This text view now shows 11, 15, 23, 33, 37, 47, and 49 all in one. So it goes ahead, it picks random numbers, it sorts them, it stringifies them, converts them to strings, and then joins them neatly with commas. If you want to, you can read the source code for this package. It's all open source on, on GitHub after all. Just open up the sample package repository here and delve in. You can see sources, sample package. That's the actual Swift code here. You can see it doesn't really do very much. It just shuffles the array and prefixes some number like that. That finishes our final technique required for this project. So please uh, go ahead and press undo a few times to remove it all from your code and reset your project to original state.